Hi everyone, my name is Dajun Kim, and I'm a postdoc researcher in the Faculty of Industrial Design Engineering at Delft University of Technology. In this talk, I'd like to share with you work that I did with my colleagues Nick Vett, Valentine Vish, and Marina Vostevos. This work is about our investigation into patient preferences towards AI autonomy in healthcare decision making. Artificial intelligence has great potential to predict patients' health risks and support informed decision making for preventive care. Previous research in ACI has focused on understanding how clinicians experience AI assistance in clinical decision making and supporting effective clinician AI collaborations. However, it has been underexplored how patients perceive the use of AI in their own healthcare decision making. In this work, we aim to address this research gap by focusing on patients' perspective in AI-assisted healthcare decision making. More specifically, we wanted to get a better understanding of two things. First, what extent of AI autonomy do patients find preferable in assisting their healthcare decision making? Second, how do patients want to use the AI with their healthcare providers in decision making? We investigated these questions in the context of my digital twin project, in which we collaborate with medical researchers, healthcare providers, and data scientists to use the digital twin technology and AI predictions to improve the care of pregnant women who are at risk of developing preeclampsia, which is a persistent high blood pressure during pregnancy. Within this research context, we explored patients' preferred level of AI autonomy in making decisions on the preventive care of preeclampsia and their preferred ways of using AI predictions with their healthcare providers. To investigate these questions, we developed an interactive narrative website in which participants went through a fictional story of a pregnant woman as if they were the woman in the story. Within the story, participants were situated in two specific clinical situations where they had to decide how to deal with the signs of preeclampsia. For example, in the 20s and 30s weeks of pregnancy, the woman's blood pressure is gradually rising, indicating that the chances of developing preeclampsia is increasing. In the 20s weeks of pregnancy, the risk is still manageable, and the woman can lower the blood pressure by nutritional interventions. Her midwife advises her to take a 1000 mg calcium tablet based on a standard clinical guideline. In the 30th weeks of pregnancy, the risk is much higher and in the worst case, the woman has to deliver the baby prematurely. The woman is referred to a gynecologist and advised to be monitored remotely and wait at home until any symptoms of preeclampsia arise. In both situations, we envisioned that AI's predictions can be helpful for the woman in deciding her care options. For instance, in the first situation, AI predictions can be helpful to optimize the amount of calcium intake for her own health need, reducing unnecessary supplement intakes. In the second situation, AI predictions can be helpful to explore health risks for the woman and the baby, depending on the timing of delivery so that the woman can be prepared for the difficult decision much earlier. We presented these possibilities using three speculative AI prototypes, namely DT Calculator, DT Virtual Advisor, and DT Virtual Doctor. Each of them demonstrated a different level of AI autonomy in assisting the woman's decision making. With the lowest level of AI autonomy, DT Calculator enables the woman to explore AI predictions as she wants. For instance, in Decision 1, the woman can formulate potential calcium intake plans herself and check the effects of the chosen option in reducing health risks. With the mid-level AI autonomy, DT Virtual Advisors recommends a range of care options proactively while respecting the woman's autonomy in making the final decisions. With the highest level of AI autonomy, DT Virtual Doctors makes its own decision for the woman and she follows it. For example, in decision one, the virtual doctor automatically gives the exact dose of calcium that she needs. And in decision two, it decides the optimal delivery date based on an acceptable minimum health risks for the baby and the woman. For each decision-making situation, we asked participants if and how they want to use AI for their healthcare decision-making. 
Participants made a choice on which level of AI autonomy they prefer and whether they want to use it with or without their healthcare providers. Also, there were options not to use the AI at all to respect patients' rights to refuse the use of AI. In total, 27 participants went through the interactive narrative either in the interview sessions or via an online survey. All of them had experience of a pregnancy before, and 10 of them had experience of complications during their own pregnancy. In the interview sessions, we asked the participants further questions to understand the reasons why they made certain choices in the story. From the analysis of the in-story responses, we found that participants' preferences for AI autonomy varied in many ways. Our discussions with the interview participants gave us insight into separate factors contributing to these differences. Firstly, we found that participants tended to prefer different levels of AI autonomy depending on the perceived risks in decision making. For example, in decision 2, where the stake was much higher than decision 1, the DT advisor was chosen most frequently than any other options, whereas in decision 1, both the DT advisor and the DT calculator were equally preferred and even the DT doctor was chosen by several participants. The participant who chose the DT calculator in decision 1 liked it because it gave them freedom to explore all the possible options by themselves. However, in decision 2, they were worried about making a wrong decision due to such high level of freedom, thus they wanted to concert with AI with higher level self-autonomy like the DT advisor. Secondly, we found that patients' preferences for AI autonomy can also be different depending on personal factors like a health history. For instance, patients who experience complications during their own pregnancy prefer to use AI more readily in both decision-making situations. However, a third of the other participants who had a healthy pregnancy did not find AI useful in both situations or either one of the situations. Also, some of those participants like to rely on AI with a higher level of autonomy, like NTT doctor, because they wanted to reduce stress in decision making and prefer to delegate their decision to AI. Lastly, our findings showed that patients' preferences for AI autonomy could change over time due to changing perceptions of AI. For instance, participants who were reluctant to accept the involvement of AI at first became more open to accept it after seeing the exact possibilities of AI through the prototypes and the flexibilities they could have in taking the advice of AI. Also, other participants mentioned that their preferences could change if AI-assisted decision-making would lead to negative care experiences. While our participants showed varied preferences for AI autonomy, it was clearly common that they wanted the involvement of healthcare providers in all levels of AI autonomy. Participants often mentioned that they would not blindly follow AI's predictions or suggestions without consulting their healthcare providers. However, their expectation of the involvement of the healthcare provider was not always high, and they thought that a quick and simple confirmation by a healthcare provider would be sufficient in low-risk decision-making to make them feel assured. As a result, we found four potential modes of interactions between patient, healthcare provider, and AI that our participants envisioned for AI-powered healthcare decision-making. The interactions range from patient-led mode, collective mode, AI-led mode, and traditional patient-clinician interaction mode without AI being involved. Based on our findings, I'd like to conclude with several suggestions for design and future research. How can we address patients' varied preferences for AI involvement in healthcare decision-making? In order to make AI-powered healthcare decision-making truly patient-centered, it will be important to enable patients to communicate their preferences for AI autonomy before it is used for their care decision-making. There needs to be a consensus between the patient and healthcare providers on how AI assistance will be used in different clinical situations and how they will collaborate accordingly. The role of healthcare providers in this consensus-making process and the system support for this interaction can be further studied. Secondly, while it is important to respect patients' preferences and values, 
Caution should be exercised in taking them into account because patients at risk can rely on AI more than they want due to emotional stress caused by clinical situations. Lastly, it is important to keep in mind that patients' preferred levels of AI autonomy can change over time. Considering these dynamics, it is important to assess patients' preferences for AI autonomy regularly and align the assisting behaviors of AI accordingly with the needs of patients and healthcare providers. Thanks for listening. For more information about this work, please refer to our paper. Thank you.